This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a blog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or am learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. This is part three of sodium ethyl sulfate synthesis. Now keep in mind, I'm taking this to a pH of seven. And the way you're supposed to do it really is to probably take the pH up to 10 right now. I can't, when I look at pH papers, you know, all anything 9, 10, 11 to 12, all the way up to 14, they all look the same color to me. They're all purple. I, I can't distinguish the difference between any of those pHs with pH paper. So that's why I take it to a seven and then I take it to, you know, and I make it really basic. Uh, because I can't tell, distinguish the difference between these pHs. But my belief is that you should take this to a pH of 10 first, or say a 9. Alright, so here's my product, the pot. Here's a empty container. And here's some calcium uh, hydroxide calcium carbonate mix. Uh, it's totally white, totally good. Um, it's about since it's a mix, it's hard to say exactly, um, but it's about a mole and a half of calcium base. Uh, now this right here, you might say, why is it all dirty? Well, I was making some calcium hydroxide in this, so, you know, it's, it's just the same stuff as this. So I just left it in there without cleaning it. I'm going to dump this into here. And then all I want to do is I want to keep adding it until the pH is a 7. So I have to keep checking it every once in a while. After I get about half of this in, I'll probably want to check to see if it's neutralized or not. Now if you have carbonate, it's going to produce CO2. So you got to do it little by little. You know what I mean? You can't just add it all in at once. I'm going to get some water and wash this out. Maybe even wash it out a second time. Huh? All right. Okay. Now, there's going to be some diethyl ether in there that you made too. But, I mean, at least a little bit. You shouldn't be doing this by any open flame. I, I smell a slight, slight tint of uh, diethyl ethers. And the hotter you reflux it, the more you're going to make. So I'm just going to take a spoon. And put it in little by little. It's, it's real acidic now, but it's still an acid with bisulfate plus the extra sulfuric acid. And that's a good hint when you're putting this in. I mean, if it's fizzing a lot, you know, if you're using the carbonate then it's obviously there's acid in there when you're doing that. All you want to do is neutralize all the acid. All, this, all the ethyl sulfonic acid and all the sulfuric acid. You want to do it as slow as, you know, the fizz allows you to do it. Now this will make more water as you, the reaction itself, you know, acid plus base makes salt water. So you are adding water to this react, to this vessel just by doing this reaction. You can hear it fizzing. Anyways, I'm just going to keep doing this, and I'm going to check the pH, and when it's 7, I'll get back with you. You can see I have a whole, whole thing here to do. I just put it in a little, little bit at a time. Stir it up. Wait for it to dissolve, and then add some more. 
keep checking the pH. Well, I got all that calcium hydroxide, calcium carbonate mixture. It's all inside here, and it's still a pH of one. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's a red. That stuff that's precipped out, that's all calcium sulfate. So they're getting all the impurities out of there so we can filter it out. Luckily, though, I do have some more calcium hydroxide carbonate mixture, but it's not as pure as this. It's a little yellow. Actually, it doesn't look bad now I mean, compared to that. Yeah, I guess it does have a little tint still. Because um, I made it from damper that had perfume in it. I bought it by mistake and I was like, oh, I'll just, I was going to toss it out, but I was like, no, I'll use it. And I just got tired of trying to get the perfume out. It's tough. Um, so, anyways, we can at least use this. Hopefully, I won't need that much more. It's kind of wet, so I weigh it up as kind of futile. Um, so I'll just throw it in until I get a pH of 7. Alright, so last night I put maybe 3 tablespoons of this in, of this calcium hydroxide stuff. And I let it sit overnight because it was just bubbling, the CO2 it was just reacting for like an hour or something. So I said, screw it, I'll put it aside and come back in the morning. So the bubbling has stopped, but what's inside here is just basically like a paste now. Now what I hope didn't happen, because I, when I stored that overnight, I didn't really wrap it good, and a lot of liquid evaporated. I hope that the sulfonic acid that we made, because we didn't, I didn't neutralize it all with calcium hydroxide yet, I still needed to add a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> so it was still, some of it was still there as a liquid, you know what I mean, before I salted it. And uh, I hope it didn't evaporate away with the alcohol and the uh, small trace amounts of uh, diethyl ether that was made. I hope it didn't evaporate away with it, you know, some of my products. I shouldn't have done that. I thought I had it wrapped good, but it wasn't really wrapped that well. So I'm going to add... 150 mils of water to hopefully get it more liquidy. Because I throw the when I throw this when I throw the carbon, I mean the uh, calcium hydroxide in there, it's it just kind of won't go inside and mix up and react. There we go. Now it's more liquidy. So I'll throw some more of this in here. It's still at a pH of one. Yeah, there we go. Now it bubbles. Gets into the liquid and reacts. Alright, so I'm going to keep reacting it until it gets down to a pH of 7. Put in a couple tablespoons of uh, calcium hydroxide and it's solidified again. So I think what I'm going to do is add some more water and filter out some of this calcium sulfate. It's just getting in the way. Put in another 50, 150 mils. Okay, yeah, this needs this needs filtered out. There's just too much in there. All right, so I got my stirred it up so it's more liquidy. Got my vacuum ready to go. I'm not going to film this because it's just going to get in my way and I, I got too much stuff to be moving around here to get this filtered and washed and all that. I'm going to pour some more water in here, wish all this out, make sure that everything is whooshed, then toss it. Put another filter in and do it again with some more of this stuff. Put it in there, vacuum it, put some water in to wish it off, etc. See, each time, you know, I put that in there, I turn the vacuum off, I put some water in there and I stir it up real good. Get all the clumps out, you know what I mean? And I let it sit there for a couple minutes. Then I put the vacuum on it. Now, this is the second time I'm doing this. I might do it a third time before I move on to the next chunk of stuff. 
because I really want to wash my product. I don't want it sticking to the calcium. All right, so finally, I filtered all this cup, uh, calcium sulfate out of there, which is a lot. Um, I'm going to put it back into this original vessel. This is some of it right here. And this container. Hopefully, I won't spill it all over the place. I rinse these out with water a little bit. And now I can start adding some more calcium hydroxide. I did do a pH of this and it's a pH of 1 still even though I put all that extra water in there. You can see the carbon dioxide when I put it in there. I don't know if you can see the effervescence. So anyways I'll keep stirring this up like I was before. It's definitely enough water. Alright so I finally got it to neutralize. Filtered pretty much you know Here's a pH paper. You can see it's pretty much uh, neutral. Okay, finally, we're going to make our product. All right, we have this calcium diethyl sulfate. All we have to do is add some sodium carbonate. The reason why, okay, because we filtered out all the calcium sulfate, this is all we should have left. When we add this and the calcium ions and the carbonate ions touch each other, they will precip up. And then we can filter that out. Okay. And we'll be left with our product. Finally, we'll have our product. Okay. Now, even if we made two moles of ethyl sulfate without the sodium on it, that's just ethyl sulfonic acid. Um, We would need two moles of this to neutralize it or to, you know, do this displacement reaction. Uh, so, at most, I need two moles of sodium carbonate, okay, at, at most. But when we get the pH to, you know, like a 12 or 14 where it's basic, we're going to stop at that point, okay. But saying two moles, it's just a starting place to think about how much you need, you know what I mean? I'm probably going to need less than two moles. So I have two and a half moles of uh, sodium carbonate here. Hopefully that's enough. If not, I might have to use some baking soda. But I'm just going to throw a little bit. I was going to put this into water and let it dissolve first. But... I have so much water here, it's unreal. So I'm just going to put it in tablespoon by tablespoon and stir it up. I know I got at least a, you know, I'm going to put at least a bunch in here before I check, start and start checking the pH. And what's happening here is that it'll go into solution, and what will come out of solution will be calcium carbonate because it's not soluble. And what's left, you have the ethyl sulfate part, and you have the sodium part from the sodium carbonate. They link up, and they stay in solution. So I'm just going to keep adding until I get a, a basic pH, like 14. All right, it's starting to get basic. So what I'm going to do, I only put about three quarters of a mole of, baking, of uh, sodium carbonate in there. So that means I only made about three quarters of it. It's actually 0.71 percent, so 71 percent of a mole. By the time I recrystallize it and everything, it's going to be down to a half a mole. All right, so I'm going to filter all this. I'm going to use a fret filter so it does it real good. Basically, we just want to get the calcium carbonate out of there so that we have a nice clear liquid. Don't miss part four. And you enjoy have a great day and always remember science is great.